Taylor Swift's globe trotting Eras Tour has finally arrived in Toronto. The first of six shows to hit the stage at Rogers Centre, now just hours away. Welcome to the Eras Tour. Swift fever has taken over the city. More than 40,000 fans are expected at each show over the next 10 days. Many fans coming from around the world. Months of anticipation culminating in tonight's sold-out performance. And we have special live coverage. My co-anchor Michelle Dubé is near Rogers Centre. Michelle, there's already a buzz. Oh, Nathan, there is. We are live in the heart of the action. We're just outside Rogers Centre. We're in a matter of hours. Tens of thousands of Swifties are going to converge to take in the first of six long-awaited, long sold out shows. This is an absolutely huge event. This Eras Tour is really as big as it gets. And this is why. T-Swift opened the tour in Arizona all the way back in March of 2023. And of course, and over the course of two years now, the better part of two years, she has traveled to five continents, making 51 stops, performing nearly 150 three and a half hour shows each night. And she's been performing more than 40 songs. It is the highest grossing tour of all time, the first ever to take in a billion dollars. And the concert movie of this very tour is also happens to be the highest grossing concert film ever. Toronto expects this will be the highest grossing live music event in our city's history. So whether you like Taylor Swift or not, the economic impact, direct and indirect, over these 10 days is estimated to be $282 million. And you certainly don't break records like that unless you've amassed a legion of fans. Taylor Swift has some of the most loyal and passionate supporters, which means you can expect hordes of Swifties converging downtown right where we are in the shadow of the Rogers Center. Our Sean Lee Thong has been taking in the frenzy. Let's go to him live now. Oh, he's outside that really cool Taylor Swift bracelet installation. What have you been experiencing today, Sean? Well, Michelle, this is the place to be right now for Taylor Swift fans before the concert because you see this big sign behind us. Everyone's been showing up to get their picture taken, and you really get a sense from just how far and wide people are coming to see the concert. We've seen people from the United States, people from other provinces, and with me to talk about it right now is Vanessa and Veronique. They're from just outside of Timmins, Ontario. Guys, can you tell me your excitement level right now? We're very excited. <laughs> Have you seen Taylor Swift before? We have, yes, uh, nine years ago um, for 1989. What is a Taylor show like and why is it drawing such a huge crowd like this? It's just the excitement and it's also, it just feels nostalgic because we've been listening to her since we were little. So it's just very nostalgic and exciting. Um, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. I feel like it's even bigger than the 1989 one. It certainly seems that way. Can I ask you what you paid for your tickets? 400. 400? Yeah. Well, she surprised me with tickets yeah. for Christmas last year, so she's the best cousin ever. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Okay, thank you very much both. And we've been speaking to fans all day today. We spoke to a few others. Uh, they were giving away uh, friendship bracelets. Uh, many people were doing things that were a little bit unique in that uh, we ran into uh, one pair who were from New Brunswick who were actually having any fan they possibly could sign their name and their favorite Taylor Swift album. We spoke to a few outside a little while ago. Here's what they had to say. So like, I'm asking people here at the concert to sign on my shirt with their name with their favorite album color. It's truly like my happy place to be here. I yeah. love it. Like no matter how many times we're gonna see Taylor live, like it's always gonna be that like yeah. that amazing. Uh, I can't even put it into words. Uh, like I keep just like wanting to cry because <laughs> I'm so happy. Have you seen Taylor before? I have not. Um, this is my first time, uh, and I've been a fan since I was 12. Now, you can see where I'm standing. It looks relatively clear. But give you a sense of what the buzz is like you saw a moment ago. Look all the way down the south side of the sidewalk on Brenmer. People are gathering here. They've been gathering here all morning. And it's hard to think that the show isn't for several hours. But the buzz just keeps building. Now, I'll come back a little later on in the hour with a little bit more as I spoke to some fans who came all the way from Las Vegas. But for now, I'll have to throw it back to you.
Thank you, Sean. We'll talk to you a bit later. And looking at those fans there, logistically, this is a huge event. The city, police, and all its partners have been planning uh, for this event in terms of security and crowd control for over a year now. And uh, they're hoping that people do not come down here, those who don't have tickets, to come have a look. And there is a perimeter, and they're going to be shutting it down in the afternoon to make sure that those coming in and out are only ticket holders. And then, of course, some people live down here, so it allow for those people to come in and out. Swift is only 34 years old. She'll be 35 next month, but she truly has lived a lifetime in the music industry, growing up before our very eyes. She has so much music over many chapters in her life, culminating in this very tour, an exploration of all her eras, as she put it. 11 albums, 17 years of music in one three and a half hour show. Here's a snapshot of her road to becoming the top entertainer on the planet right now. Born in Pennsylvania, Taylor Swift's passion for singing and songwriting was evident early on, prompting the family to move to Nashville when she was just a teen so she could pursue country music. Her debut album dropped in 2006, and she quickly gained recognition for writing and co-writing all her songs. By 2008, Swift's second studio album, Fearless, catapulted her to the next level. It hit number one on the Billboard 200, netting nearly a dozen weeks atop the chart. Songs from that album marking the beginning of her transition into the pop sphere. I'm really happy for you. I'm going to let you finish. In 2009, that infamous onstage interruption by Kanye West at the MTV Video Music Awards sparked an avalanche of media coverage as she continued to rack up awards, including a Grammy for Album of the Year in 2010. 10. And with each subsequent album and tour, the accolades rolled in. Records were broken, Swift becoming part of the fabric of pop culture. <laughs> Her personal life, notably who she was dating and writing songs about, of constant interest. Oh my God. <laughs> a legion of Swifties solidifying, spanning generations, spawning a culture of friendship and positivity. It's pretty amazing that she's gotten to where she is today. Over the years, the songstress making a point to speak out on the workings of the music industry and how artists are compensated. A public dispute over efforts to buy her masters ultimately led to Swift's mission to re-record her back catalog. When the pandemic hit, her Lover Fest tour was among the casualties, yet she was well on her way to making the Forbes billionaires list. Welcome to the Eras Tour. Because what followed was swift mania like we've never seen. This record-breaking, economy-boosting, career-defining Eras Tour, which has taken the world by storm. And to help put the Swift mania and her musical influence into perspective, we're joined by Sam East of 99.9 Virgin Radio. Sam, this event has been a long time coming. Think yeah. back to, what was it, November of 2023, yeah. when we found out that she was actually going to be putting Toronto as a stop on her tour. There was this whole effort. The prime minister tweeted her, and then boom, she's got six shows in the city. In your line of work in radio, I mean, it's probably been part of your reality for a long time. I know you could maybe help put the, the fandom and the frenzy into perspective. Yeah, it's been a long path to get here, as you've been talking about at the top of the show as well. Imagine the power and impact of someone who started this tour in March of 2023, and the excitement is still here. That is the power of Taylor Swift. And even in our line of work, we're like, can she hold on to that, sustain it for that long? And being here around Rogers Centre, the start of six shows, the excitement is unlike anything we've seen. So the, the power of Taylor Swift is very clear. Mm -hmm. For those who maybe aren't fans or not as familiar, talk about her music. What is it about her music and what is it about this particular tour? Because she's had tours before yeah. where people could get tickets at a reasonable price, but her fame has really skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is? Taylor Swift is autobiographical in nature. She really kind of peels the curtain back for her fans and brings them along for the ride. And while other artists are great and talented too, there's something special about Taylor Swift in that she lets you into her life. And you can see through her catalog of music, it's chronicling, you said that yourself off the top, it's chronicling the many years that she's been in the music industry, but also sharing really personal and intimate moments of her life with the world. 
can we talk about the effort to get tickets? Because I know right now people are still trying to get, uh, there are tickets available, but it's thousands and thousands of dollars. Talk about the frenzy in that respect. You know what? I won't lie to you, Michelle. It has been quite the struggle for a lot of uh, desperate Swifties, really. And I've heard anecdotally that if you want to be in the top bowl, you're looking at $2,400 per ticket, which is rent for a lot of people in Toronto. And so I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to have to be out there hustling, maybe looking at resales or somebody who can't make it for whatever reason. But uh, it's it's not your normal $300, $400 ticket. It's thousands of dollars. I'm sure at Virgin Radio, you've been pestered by those fans. Mm -hmm. What have you guys been doing? Uh, well, to just today, we had an initiative with the Daily Bread Food Bank. Our morning show, Darren and Deepa, had the Fearless Food Drive. And with every donation, you have a chance to win a pair of tickets. So the last I checked, over 5,500 pounds donated for the Daily Bread Food Bank. That's a cause that's near and dear to Taylor Swift as well, uh, these initiatives. So it was great to see the community come through. And, and as we've seen with Taylor Swift, it's about the community that has formed around her. There's a real camaraderie. And it's yeah. nice to know that, it, that it's doing a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Sam East, 99.9 Virgin Radio. You can catch her show in the afternoons, 2 to 5. Great yeah. to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Take care. Well, our very own Jessica Smith is also on location today in the shadow of the Rogers Center as well. Let's bring her in. Jess, where are you standing and how about this weather? We're dressed for it. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. I'm right in front of the giant friendship. I'm going to do a quick bracelet exchange. I have some people here from San Diego and from Germany as well. So here you go. We'll switch it up. But you're right, Michelle. The forecast is so nice. You guys can take all of those. We'll switch them up. And Marie from Germany came all the way from Germany. Take as many as you want. There you go, my love. We'll switch. And the wind really has died down just a tiny bit. So we're going to hold on to a really beautiful forecast, honestly, as we head throughout the next couple of days. But the weather held off. I think the Swifties have a lot to do with the fact that the forecast is absolutely stunning. And we will see a daytime high today sitting just above seasonal, making it really comfortable to spend some time outdoors. There is more We're looking events. at a there little bit of rain holding off as we make our way in towards kind of the next couple of hours, but we should stay nice and clear as we head into the evening for all the Swifties. Temperature wise right now, we are in kind of the single digits. It's a little breezy out here, but overall it hasn't stopped the Swifties from coming out in full force in all of their outfits. And as we make our way throughout the afternoon, it stays nice. Coming up, I'll have a full look at your long range forecast. I'm going to do a few more bracelet exchanges because I'm getting a bit of a collection and I'm having just a little bit of fun, but I'll send things back over to Michelle. Bracelet. Uh, Jess. I am the recipient of your bracelets. Look at this. I've got some from Jess. Thank you so much. Now look, not everybody can get tickets, but there are other events happening in this city uh, in honor of Taylor Swift and for fans who aren't going to be seeing her show in person, including a tailgate party just to my left here at the Metro Toronto Convention Center this afternoon. CTV's Mike Walker has a preview of what to expect. Well, just under an hour from now, the doors to tailgate will officially open. This is being described as a massive, one-of-a-kind fan event celebrating all things Taylor Swift. Inside the convention center, Swifties will be able to gather here and take part in sing-alongs, dance parties, friendship bracelet making. Organizers say this will be the largest bracelet making area in the city with more than 5 million beads. There will also be photo opportunities. We've been speaking with excited fans this morning who will be attending this event as well as tonight's opening concert, including a mother and daughter who just arrived here from Chicago. She got bracelets on the plane. Um, she got bracelets at the hotel breakfast this morning. And so it's just exciting to see everybody and the camaraderie and the excitement. It's fun. They have um, all her albums on the um, like bracelets, like Blubber and songs and stuff. When your mom told you you were going to the concert, how did that make you feel? Excited. Why are you so excited? As I've always like. Taylor Swift is my biggest fan out. Like, she's a really good singer. Tell me a bit about that, what you're yeah. looking forward to this weekend. Um, I think just meeting new people and everyone having similar interests. And I mean, we were just walking down the street and someone just came up and handed us stickers and bracelets and everyone is so sweet. Now tailgate will be open to fans from one in the afternoon until 11 at night on all concert dates. Organizers tell me limited tickets are still available and they're expecting upwards of 6,000 people to attend each day. Mike Walker, CTV News. 
Now, Toronto police say they are ready for the massive crowds that will be in the city for Taylor Swift's concerts. Police have activated a command centre and it will allow officers to monitor maps of the city, calls for service and traffic cameras. Personnel from other agencies are also going to be present to assist police with getting resources to where they are needed. Each person in the in these seats have a specific role. So, for example, we might have a person that's in charge of investigations or another person may be in charge of operations. It's an exciting time in the city. We're super excited to have Taylor Swift here for six nights. Um, you know, I think it's important for people to know that the Toronto Police have been working really closely with tour organizers, city staff, all departments to ensure that we have appropriate resources in place to make sure everybody has an incredibly happy and safe time. The downtown core, which is busy on a good day, is expected to be as busy as it gets. Officials are urging those without tickets to avoid traveling to this area on show days. And police are warning about potential ticket scams. They've been rampant, sharing on social media. Imagine finding the perfect ticket for that concert or game you've been dying to attend, only to realize they're fake. Scammers are out there using social media to trick fans into buying counterfeit tickets. Always buy from trusted sources and protect your plans. And if you are heading downtown, it is a good idea to plan your route. You can't just come to the Rogers Centre and park here. The city's going to be closing the westbound lanes on Bremner Boulevard between Reese Street and Navy Wharf as of 1 this afternoon because of an expected influx of concert goers. The city also says there will be additional spot road closures for crowd and traffic management during and immediately following the concerts. Metrolinx is increasing go train service while this tour is in town. Transit really is the way to go. There will be extra trips to and from Union Station on both the Lakeshore West and Lakeshore East lines and later departing trains from Union on the Milton, Kitchener, Barrie and Stouffville lines to make sure concert goers get home safely. And on the TTC, there will be more trains running on line one from 5 to 8 p.m. and from 11 to 1.30 a.m. And there are more streetcars and buses running in the downtown core, as well as extra supervisors and special constables and other first responders on the road. So that's it for the beginning of our Taylor Swift coverage right now. Stay with us. We have more live coverage of all things Taylor Swift as the city prepares for tonight's big show. And here's a beautiful live shot from our chopper overhead. I'm going to pass things back to you in studio, Nathan. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Now to other more serious news. One man is dead and another is seriously injured after a stabbing. They stabbed each other overnight near Fort York. The homicide unit is now investigating the deadly altercation. CTV's John Musselman has the details. Police were called to this building behind me at 12.45 this morning. Reports of a confrontation between two men in a 20th floor unit. Police say that there was a stabbing. One man stabbed another man. They were both rushed to hospital. One of the men did not survive. The motive for this is unknown at this time. Police have sealed off the unit on the 20th floor as this investigation continues. We did get an update from the homicide squad this morning. Here's what they had to say. At this time, there are no outstanding suspects or any kind of uh, ongoing public risk as a result of this incident that we have been able to identify. The two men were known to each other. We are currently working on identifying the deceased individual and notifying, and then once that's complete, we will then take steps to notify next of kin. Again, the unit remains sealed off as this investigation continues. Anyone with information is asked to call Toronto Police or Crime Stoppers. John Musselman, CTV News. Toronto Police also gave an update on a disturbing gun battle earlier this week. 16 guns were seized and displayed at Toronto Police headquarters this morning. Investigators say all of them came from the U.S., the shootout happened late Monday near Queen and Sudbury. Police say three males opened fire on a recording studio and the group inside fired back. Eight people are facing charges, including a 16-year-old who police say is wanted in a separate home invasion and murder back in April. These weapons serve as a stark reminder of the real and present danger that illegal firearms pose to our community, to innocent citizens and to officers who bravely respond to these incidents. What makes this situation even more alarming is the context in which these firearms were found. 
The individuals arrested were attending a birthday party at this location. Not only were they allegedly brazenly displaying these weapons on social media, but they also brought these firearms out into our streets and engaged in reckless exchange of gunfire. It happened in a busy part of our city where countless lives were at risk. It is a miracle that no one was injured or killed. Investigators say an unmarked police vehicle was also shot during the exchange of fire. Two officers were in the vehicle at the time. The sexual assault trial against Toronto City Councilor Michael Thompson will move forward after a failed defense motion. Thompson's lawyers had asked the judge to have a single assault charge stayed or for the Crown prosecutor to be removed. They argued the Crown was in breach by giving a witness a preview of a photo they'd been shown during cross-examination. The judge said there was a breach, but it didn't require the removal of the Crown nor the charge be stayed. Thompson's trial resumes December 4th in Bracebridge. He's pleaded not guilty to the charges. The price tag on the Premier's plan to tear out bike lanes on Bloor, University and Avenue Road is now down, out now, and it doesn't come cheap. Toronto City staff reports that ripping out the cycling infrastructure on those three routes would cost provincial taxpayers about $48 million. And that's nearly double the $27 million the city spent on installing them. Council is set to debate what can be done about the province's plan to meddle in the municipal matter. What world is the best use of $50 million of public money to destroy brand new infrastructure that would last for 75 years and make life more affordable, healthier and safer for the people of this city just because Mr. Ford likes to sit in his limousine and not have a nurse on her bike go by him? Whether you agree with the bike lanes or not, this is a local matter, not something the province should be focused on. Right now there are, what, 5 million Ontarians without a family doctor. Maybe that's where the priority should be. City staff say that ripping out the bike lanes and reconstructing the roads would increase travel times for drivers during construction. And then once they're rebuilt, improvements to vehicular traffic would be minimal. With thousands of visitors in the city for the Taylor Swift heiress tour, a group of workers at the Fairmont Royal York are planning to protest outside the hotel tonight. This is video of a previous protest shared online by their union. The workers are demanding salary increases as hotel costs in the city skyrocket during the concerts. The union says Royal York employees have not seen a salary increase since 2021 and have been negotiating a new contract with the hotel since 2022. Well, time's running out to avoid a Canada Post labour disruption. Postal workers could be off the job tomorrow if an agreement is not reached by midnight. Let's bring in CTV's Scott Hurst uh, right now to talk mm -hmm. more about this. Scott, where do things stand now? Nathan, they appear to be bargaining down to the wire. We've reached out to both sides to get an update to see if there are any significant developments in talks. What we've heard from Canada Post specifically is that the two sides remain at the bargaining table. This is taking place in Ottawa, and the goal from Canada Post is to maintain service as much as possible, even in the event that the Canadian Union of Postal Workers initiates rotating strike activity on Friday. We have yet to hear from the union specifically today, but we uh, have heard from Canada Post that uh, that it does say both parties are at the table and talks are still ongoing. Now, Canada Post has pledged to work to minimize disruptions and continue to deliver benefit checks, including the Canada Child Benefit, Old Age Security, and the Canada Pension Plan. As you mentioned, postal workers could be off the job as early as tomorrow morning. Both sides have said they want to avoid significant service disruptions, but they've been at it. They've been bargaining now for close to one year. Postal workers are pushing for better wages and working conditions and also improved rights for some temporary employees. However, Canada Post has been highlighting its deteriorating financial situation losing about 490 million dollars in the first half of this year so Nathan that of course is looming large over the talks as well as the timing of this right now and the potential for a strike action tomorrow with the busy holiday shopping season fast approaching Black Friday as well so lots of Canadian businesses as well as those at the bargaining table wondering exactly what might happen tomorrow morning. So, Scott, if they can't reach a deal themselves, might the government step in? 
The government uh, is not willing to step in at the moment, but of course that could change. Nathan, we've seen the government step into two recent situations, uh, notably just last week with uh, port strikes in Vancouver, uh, the BC ports and Montreal, uh, sending them to binding arbitration. We saw the government also step in earlier this year to end rail strikes and so it's not out of the realm of possibility however we did hear from the labor minister earlier this week saying that the goal right now from the government's perspective is for the two sides to reach a collective agreement at the bargaining table but as you mentioned uh, you know we could see the government potentially step in as we have seen this twice already in recent months nathan and Scott, are retailers making contingency plans? Retailers might have to make contingency plans because we're hearing from the Canadian Federation of Independent Business that a lot of small businesses in this country could be affected if there is a potential for rotating strikes that do begin tomorrow. The Canadian Federation of Independent Business says it's disappointed by the potential for yet another work stoppage that could be impacting small businesses in particular across this country and urging the two sides to quickly come to an agreement to avoid any disruption heading into the busy and all-important holiday shopping season. According to the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, three-quarters, about 75% of small firms said they will be negatively affected by a work stoppage. So lots of people across the country, particularly small businesses, Nathan, watching these talks incredibly closely. I can understand that. Thank you, CTV Scott Hurst. Thanks, Nathan. On this possible Canada Post strike or disruption. Well, some other news now. The Prime Minister will leave for South America this afternoon to attend two international conferences. Justin Trudeau's first stop will be the APEC Summit in Lima, Peru. The PM will take part in meetings of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Group. It's primarily involved in resolving barriers to trade and forming better links across the Pacific Rim. On Saturday, the Prime Minister travels to Rio de Janeiro for the G20 Summit. Russia's war on Ukraine, ending hunger, and artificial intelligence are among some of the key issues to be discussed. In Washington, Republicans will now officially retain control of the House of Representatives. The GOP has reached the 218 seats needed for a majority. That happened following victories in Arizona and California. The Republicans had already won control of the Senate from Democrats. It means the GOP now has both chambers of Congress and will be in a position to implement the agenda of President-elect Trump. To the UK, where the king is celebrating his 76th birthday. Buckingham Palace released this new photo to mark the occasion. There were also military gun salutes and the bells of Westminster Abbey were rung. The monarch treats his birthday as a normal working day. Now, this year, he opened two food distribution hubs as part of a project he launched a year ago to help bridge the gap between food poverty and food waste. In the Netherlands, three bears received a weighty new addition to their enclosure today. Staff at the Royal Burger Zoo treated the Bruins to a massive 791-kilogram white pumpkin. Using their strong claws, the sun bears quickly opened the giant vegetable and began feasting. The pumpkin had been on display at a local restaurant for weeks until the owner offered it to the zoo as a special treat. Sun bears are the smallest bear species and are known for their climbing and digging skills. Their usual diet includes insects, fruits, and honey. Meanwhile, a couple in Adelaide came home to a surprise guest in their bed, a wild koala. Now, the animals mostly live along Australia's eastern coast and are endangered in many areas. In 2022, a national recovery plan was launched, but populations are still in decline. Luckily, the couple was able to eventually guide the koala out of their house safely using a blanket. Jess. The forecast has been so agreeable for the Swifties coming down to the city of Toronto. And as we head throughout the afternoon, the winds will get a little lighter. We're still holding on to a fairly overcast sky, but overall, we're staying dry from the rain that's going to stay southwest of us. Coming up, I'll have a full look at your long range forecast. We'll break down the rest of the day today. Look ahead to the weekend to help you prepare as we head in towards the middle of November. All that after the break. CTV News at noon is on the road today because the biggest pop star on the planet is in town for the first of six 
sold out shows. This is a huge, long awaited and anticipated event. And fans are flooding into the downtown core for the show, which is this evening. Our Jessica Smith is out and about around Rogers Center. She's been talking to Swifties. Jess, this weather isn't too bad. Yes, it's cold, <laughs> but I don't think any weather would stop any of these fans. Michelle, you're absolutely right. It is November, right? We've had such a warm start to the month that I really do think the weather has held off. We're dealing with a bit of a breeze, but overall it is comfortable. Weather is brought to you by the Presler Law Firm. Injury lawyers, you don't pay unless they win. And Michelle, I've spoken to people from Germany, from Hawaii, from all over the U.S. who have come to the city, and they're saying, you know what, it's not so bad. The folks from Germany, they had their layers on, and they were absolutely prepared for the day. But I've seen people in their full Swifty fits, red even now, and the show is not until this evening, but temperature-wise, it is a little cool, but it's very seasonal, just above as we make our way throughout the afternoon. Now, right across the province, it's a little fresh. We're in the single digits here in the city, sitting at 9, through Windsor at 8, and Ottawa at 2. As we make our way throughout the day, winds will get a little lighter, so it makes it easier to manage. We're looking at a daytime high right around 10, so sitting just above seasonal. Everybody holding on. I, I really do think the, the Swifty effect had something to do with it. As we head into this evening, we'll stay a little bit above that seasonal norm, around five degrees, so it's a little cool. So as you make your way home from the concert, you'll still need the layers, but we're not dealing with anything too frigid. Now, we've been watching that rain very closely. The good news is the bulk of it staying southwest of us as we head throughout the day. So we are going to feel the wind and a little bit of the cloud cover, but overall we are staying nice and dry as we welcome in the first day of the Eras Tour. Timing everything out the rest of your afternoon looking not too bad. Again, the rain staying at bay. I don't know if it again is the Swifty effect or it's just the little bit of high pressure holding on, but it's going to be welcomed. Through this evening, it clears out. We'll see a little more sunshine as we make our way into the day tomorrow, and then we really do wrap up the week in a fairly sunny and very seasonal way. So if you do have plans, whether it involves Taylor Swift or not, it will be absolutely stunning. Now, as we make our way into the weekend, a little more sunshine out there. And really, as we settle into the next seven days, it's not too bad. We're holding on into the low double digits for the most part as we make our way through the end of the week, through the weekend, and looking ahead to next week. Again, into your Friday, a little cloud cover to get things started, but a fairly seasonal day. And then back into the double digits for your Saturday and your Sunday. Looking ahead to next week as we really do settle into the middle of the month. Again, we're holding on well above where we should be. It is not those 20 degree days that we saw a little while ago, but still quite comfortable outside. And everybody here is in the spirit of things. And I'm loving all of the outfits. I have to say hi to you because I saw you earlier and your jacket is so sparkly. Can you tell me your name? Cassidy. Cassidy, are you excited uh, like a little bit? I am so excited. I am so excited, and we are just ready for Taylor Swift. We got the matching pink memo. Michelle, I'm going to send things back to you. We're going to keep exchanging bracelets and having fun. I'm building a stack, and I'm very excited. I'll send things back to you. <laughs> I love the outfit. That is absolutely fabulous. And this epic Taylor Swift sh six show run is due to bring big bucks into our city with half a million people expected over the course of Swift's six shows. Here to break down the economic impact is Kathy Motten, Senior Manager of Corporate Communications with Destination Toronto. Destination Toronto has really crunched the numbers on this event. Give us a sense of what Taylor Swift coming to town will do for our economy. So we're looking at about 152 million in visitor spending. So that spending comes here, goes to hotels, restaurants, attractions, all the things that visitors do when they come into the city. And then that spending, you know, there's the restaurants and the hotels, they have to buy goods and services. So there's additional spending, and then there's induced spending from the wages that come in from employees and other uh, um, spending like that. So that leads to the economic impact, which is the 282 million that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Uh, I, th not every Everybody's a Taylor Swift fan, and a lot of people who live around here might be thinking, oh, this is such a big disruption in our city. But the influx of dollars uh, will have a lasting impact. It's also tax dollars as well. Yeah, that's right. We're looking at about $40 million in uh, tax revenue. Um, and, you know, to your point, I mean, listen, that spending, it stays here. It didn't start here, but it stays here, and it continues to circulate. And I want to be in a city, I want to live in a city where artists like Taylor Swift 
pick to come for these types of events. That's what makes it so vibrant. It really is kind of a feather in our cap here in Toronto. And it looks as though the city's pulled out all the stops. We have Taylor Swift Way. So we've changed the names of a street leading from Nathan Phillips Square to here at Rogers Centre. But also hotels and businesses, they've kind of been tapping into the Swift fandom. Maybe you can give us a sense. Yeah, we're seeing, it seems like the whole city has started jumping in. You know, we've got hotels that have got packages. The beach has got a Taylor Swift themed room. There's so many restaurants that have menus. I even heard there was a, a bakery that's got a cake decorating. So, you know, I think it's really exciting and it's so great for the city. And even if you're not a Swifty, you just have to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It seems like it is good economics to just do anything Taylor Swift. Now, for those who don't have tickets or didn't even think they would be possible to see the show, I know Destination Toronto has put together a scavenger hunt, which I think is really cool. Can yeah. you give us a sense? Yeah. So actually, we put together the scavenger hunt and the way that it works is every time you check in at a location you just have to be in the proximity that's an automatic entry into the uh, pr uh, contest um, their song clues their Taylor Swift song clues very in line with her Easter eggs so you and you look at the song clue you answer it and then there's weekly prizing there's like this really cool Taylor Swift inspired box and a weekend getaway is our grand prize at the end of November oh that sounds fun can I ask yeah outside of what you do at decision yeah. Trial, have you tried to get tickets are you going to the show I wish I was going I have a 12 year old Swifty at home and oh. sadly I haven't been able to get her there but I'll probably take her down to tailgate at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. That sounds like a lot of fun. Kathy yeah. Monton, thank you so much. Destination Toronto, great to have you with us. We are going to, let's throw it up to the chopper to see what it looks like here at Rogers Center. The Eras Tour opens the first show of this long run in the city. Anticipation has been building. Flights have landed. Hotels have been booked. Still ahead, how Sick Kids Hospital is tapping into Swift Media. We're live outside Rogers Center where Taylor Swift herself will take the stage in a matter of hours. Swifties know exchanging friendship bracelets uh, is really one of the fun rituals surrounding the concert experience. There's a giant Swift bracelet outside Rogers Center. And the young fans, uh, the young fans and patients at the Hospital for Sick Kids are getting in on the action. Our health reporter Pauline Chan will tell you why. Two Taylor Swift fans exchanging friendship bracelets outside the hospital for sick children. And it's a ritual that's been going on inside the hospital too. So I think this is an event, it's, it's the first of its kind here, but the hospital always puts on so many incredible events that make sure patients have an opportunity to connect. 17-year-old Kira Gajowski has been coming to sick kids for years as part of the Group for Improvement of Intestinal Function and Treatment Program. And the gift program is for patients with intestinal failure. So essentially, when the intestines don't function properly, they cannot absorb and you have to be hooked up to, I'm hooked up to TPN for 18 hours of the day. And like so many of the young patients, Swift's lyrics have meant a lot to her. We thought it would be an amazing way to honor our, you know, patient ambassador community, really, who have often told us how much Taylor Swift's music uh, means to, to them and, and their journey, to, you know, of hope and healing and how her lyrics really help people. Kira is especially excited to have tickets for one of Swift's shows at Rogers Center. You know, she was always a big part of my journey when I was in the hospital, so I'm very much looking forward to, to seeing that connection in person and to feeling her music in the same way I felt it when I was 10, 11 years old in my hospital bed. Swift is also known for her many quiet charitable deeds in the cities that she plays. So is there a chance she might come and visit young patients here at Sick Kids? Definitely there are no plans uh, for her to come by as of yet. But just in case she does, Kira, who comes to the hospital every couple of days, will be on the lookout for her musical idol. Pauline Chan, CTV News. You never know where Swift might go in the city, and that's part of the excitement, wondering if she'll take in any of the attractions. Certainly a lot of bracelets everywhere. And our Sean Leethong is out and about. Sean, you've been talking to fans. Obviously, Toronto Swift fans are here, but en masse, the people coming to see this show are from outside of the city. 
They certainly are, Michelle. It's a cultural event for the city, but it also brings the world to the city. Now, I've been speaking with fans today who are from other provinces, people who are from outside of the city, and people who are from the United States. Now, a little while ago, I actually caught up with three generations of one family, and they were coming from the United States. Believe it or not, they flew from Las Vegas, Nevada, and Omaha, Nebraska to come to Toronto just to see Taylor Swift. It's an exciting moment for them, and it gives you a sense of just how widespread these events are. Here's what they had to say. Three generations here. Yeah. This is our mom, her <laughs> sisters, and these are our girls. Woo! Can you t talk to me about the excitement level of going to this concert, traveling across the continent to see it? Oh my gosh, yes. so excited. We've been just <laughs> building up to it. A million out of 10. <laughs> Now, those, those fans, of course, were excited for tonight, but it gives you a sense when I turn this way just how big this is because we're several hours away from the concert and we're seeing so many fans lining up. They're meeting each other. They're exchanging those friendship bracelets like we talked about, but they also have deeply personal stories. This mother and daughter you're looking at right now, they're actually from Bradford, Ontario, and she was telling me she sings Taylor Swift to her daughter every night since she was a baby, and now they get to come to a show together, and they enjoy, you know, greeting all the other fans that are from all over the world, and it's really a, a really wholesome vibe down here right now, so people are making new friends, and I even got a friendship bracelet of my own. That was courtesy of Jess Smith, so it's a good time down here. We're, of course, going to have more coming up throughout the day and at 5 and 6 o'clock Tonight, but for now, Michelle, I'll throw it back to you. Not a bad assignment for you, Sean. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun here on location at the ERAs tour. Our coverage continues after this short break, along with the rest of the day's news. We'll see you shortly. Canada's benchmark stock index topped 25,000 this morning to trade in record territory. Andrew Bell of BM Bloomberg has the latest in business. Hello there. Here are your business headlines. Stocks rose this morning with Toronto's Composite Index on course for a record close above 25,000. A sliding Canadian dollar has made assets in this country cheaper for foreign investors. Among blue chip stocks, Manulife and Sun Life hit record highs, and Air Canada traded at the highest since 2023. The Canadian dollar dropped again to hit the lowest since May of 2020. The currency broke through the widely watched level of 140 to the US dollar, or about 71.4 cents US. The US dollar has been climbing against world currencies in anticipation of strong economic growth under President-elect Donald Trump, but also possible inflation. And finally, US stocks slipped in morning trading amid signs of buyer exhaustion after a run-up to record levels this week. One strategist said, quote, the stock market is showing signs that it's getting tired. It could be due for a bit of a pullback soon. Walt Disney jumped 8% on a profit beat and strong forecast. That's the latest in business. I'm Andrew Bell of BNM Bloomberg. Many people prefer brand new cars because they don't want to risk buying a used car. They may have problems. But unfortunately, even new cars can have defects that are difficult to repair. And if you buy a new car like that, you're stuck with it. CTV's Pat Foran has this consumer alert. It has left me uh, doubting whether or not I made the right choice. Peter Sabolski of Waterloo says he was excited to pick up his 2025 Kia EV9 this fall. He paid $90,000 for the fully electric vehicle, but not long after he got it home, he couldn't drive it. You cannot put it into drive. You can't put it in a reverse. You can't even put it in neutral. It stays in park. It's locked in park. Sabolski says the SUV has been in the shop for over a month. In the 36 days that we've owned this vehicle, it has functioned for a total of six days. Frustrated, Sabolski told the dealership if they can't fix his new car, they should replace it or give him his money back. Exchange it for a new vehicle or give us a refund. Canadians, from a consumer protection point of view, are not as well protected as in the United States. Car Help Canada says currently in Ontario, consumers who feel they've bought a lemon are stuck with it. They can use CAMVAP, a program that helps resolve disputes with manufacturers or take a dealer to court. But what would really help consumers is a lemon law if a new car can't be repaired in a reasonable amount of time. 
If you take the, the car back to the dealership three times and they can fix it, they have to give you a new car or they have to, uh, to give you back your money. Quebec brought in a lemon law last year to help protect consumers, and Car Help Canada says every province should have one too. When CTV News reached out to Kia, a spokesperson said, Kia Canada has identified a small number of vehicles experiencing an issue with the electronic shift lever. Affected customers are being provided a rental vehicle free of charge. Savolsky feels Ontario should have a lemon law, but after he contacted us, his car was repaired and he's back on the road, hoping there won't be other issues. Thank you so much, CTV, for your consumer help. Pat Foran, CTV News. The Toronto Raptors have unveiled a new special edition jersey. Oh, two words that changed our history forever. It celebrates the team's 30th anniversary and Vince Carter. The alternate uniform features a red dinosaur wearing the Hall of Famer's number 15 in the midst of a dunk. It also includes design elements from the Raptors' three decades of jerseys. The new City Edition uniform will debut next Thursday when the Raptors host Minnesota. It'll be worn during five games this season. And there's another live shot of Rogers Center where Taylor Swift fans are going to converge for the big show tonight, the entertainment event of the year in this city. Our live coverage will continue right after the break. Stay with us. We're going to head back outside Rogers Center where, Michelle, excitement is building. We're just a few hours away. We are. There are fans milling about, but they are going to shut this area down shortly. They just want ticket holders. They're not allowed to line up till 3.30. Doors open at 4.30. Looks like, Jess, we're in the clear for rain. I think we're in the clear for rain. We've been watching the system very closely, and I feel like... People are in their fulls, 50 fits, and it won't matter because we're seeing a little cloud cover, but obviously we're staying dry from rain, at least for now, and it looks like it's going to hold off for the rest of the afternoon and evening. So some good news there. Temperature-wise, it's pretty seasonal. I mean, we're in full fits. I see not a lot of winter coats, so we're doing okay, but overall, it's not too bad. Hopefully, everyone can keep singing their hearts out all day, and for the next six days, I'll send things back over to you guys. All right. Thank you, Jess. And that is it for CTV News at Noon. Remember, you can get Toronto's breaking news all day long on CP24 and at our website, ctvnewstoronto.ca. For Michelle Dubé, Jessica Smith, and myself, thanks for watching. Be sure to join us later for CTV News at 5 and 6. Have a great afternoon.